Hello again, it's uh, chapter 3 video and we're looking at finding errors and debugging. Um, when you um, work with your uh, code, you're going to have um, uh, some errors are going to be generated. Now we've got the syntax type errors and logical type errors. So the syntax type errors are the errors which BlueJ will pick up. Um, so if we have a look here, if we look at the clock display class, um, if I remove the semicolon, for example, from uh, the number display um, hours line here, the, uh, this line here, remove the semicolon and then click compile. Um, oh, we'll just reset the virtual machine for a second. And then try and compile that, you get an error. Um, it gives you the highlights, the text there, and at the bottom here it says um, semicolon expected. So it highlights the text there. So if I show you again, just to add an A on the end of it again, I'll compile that. Um, and then it will show you this, uh, show you where the error message is and then give you the error message there. Finally compile that and then that's fine. I can uh, press Control K, which will uh, is the shortcut for compile or click compile there. So that is a syntax based error. Um, the other type of errors which are a lot harder to find is logical based errors. Now logical based errors are used when you um, create variables um, and create methods but they, 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 they work but they don't work how you want them to work. Um, so I'm going to show you um, how to track and find um, lo potential logical errors by using the de debugging tool which comes as part um, of BlueJ. Now um, debugging is useful for gaining insights into program behavior and we can see what's going on underneath the code and actually track it. Um, as you're going through your learning this is a really useful tool because you can actually see what's happening to the variables, which methods are getting called and what's happening to the objects. Um, and uh, later on, when you're trying to work out what's wrong with your code, then you can uh, then you can work out where the problems where the problems and where the errors are. And this is done through um, setting breakpoints, um, examining those variables, and being able to step through the code. So let's uh, let's just have a look at that. Um, the debugger will look something like this. Um, the example which is being used here is the mail um, the mail item. Um, project, so you can have a look at the mail project, which is a chapter three project. We're not going to be looking into the mail project, though, um, so it gives you another opportunity to look into it if you want to look at the debugger again. We're going to be um, going through a project which you know by now, um, which is the clock display and the number display um, classes and, and, and their project. Um, so what you do is um, you set breakpoints on lines of code and then the uh, program will stop executing at that point um, and then you can go in and see what's actually happening. So let's try that out. So here we have, have our um, uh, Blue Jay. Uh, if we go into our clock display, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a, a breakpoint here. Now you can press Control B to put in a breakpoint um, or you can just go to Tools um, and Set and Clear Breakpoint. So we want to have that breakpoint there where it has the little red, very difficult to make out um, even on my screen here with that, that little red thing, the little stop sign. Um, that means it's going to stop at that point in the code and show you which variables there is. So let's have a go at running that code now. So go into clock display and we'll just create a normal clock display without any hours and minutes. So immediately the debugger pops up on your screen and looks like this. Um, it shows um, the main, this is Java underneath, you can ignore this bit um, now, but the interesting bit as far as you're concerned is the clock display bit there. Now, let's have a look at the code. What we can do is this um, shows on the code which line it's acting on. So if I click step, it'll then go to the next line. Um, now let's have a look at instance variables. Now these are the instance variables or fields for you. Um, we've got the number display, um, hours, which is at the moment equals to an object reference because we did it in the previous line. The number display minutes, which is what we're about to do now, is currently um, null. And the dis display string, which is the final field here, is um, at null. Remember, um, we, we discussed that um, objects when they're created are, um, or objects when they're declared, are given um, a null value. So when we click step again on that, um, then we can see that we're actually on the update display part of the uh, uh, code. Um, but the thing we've just, uh, we just done is we've created the minutes 
um, uh, object and we've got an object reference to that as well. As we step on again we then get to the uh, to the end of the brace and it says that we've created the, the, the display string. So that's the step um, feature. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to restart the program and show you the step into a button which is probably the most useful one. I close that down now uh, and go back in compile it again now again we've uh, the first line of code which is to be um, which is to, to run is the line of code within the clock display constructor um, so nothing has happened yet now what I'm going to do now is rather than clicking step which just goes to the next line we're going to go step into what step into does is actually goes into what's going on in this line here so rather than just executing this line and then going on to the next line it goes into what's actually happening so what it'll actually do is go into the number display class so let's have a look at that as we can see here now the uh, number display class appears here um, and the black line here shows that we're starting in the number display constructor. Because we're now in the number display um, object, we've now got the instant variables um, within the number display or the fields. Um, as we continue to step into, after the first uh, brace, nothing has happened yet. Um, as we step into again, we can see now that the um, the limit has been set to 24 uh, and that's because in the uh, clock display it says it's starter was given the parameter 24 there um, and that 24 effectively gets put into there um, into rollover limit and then limit then equals the, the rollover limit which is um, which is the 24 this value then is um, given a zero um, for the uh, for the value because that just um, gives a value there of value equals naught. As we step into it again we get to the brace which means the end of the constructor so then we go back to the clock display class. Now we're back on the clock display class. As we step into it again now we've finished that line of code we now we go into the next line of code and again what we're going to do is because we're going to step into the code again we're actually going to go into the number display class. We're taking the parameter of 60 into the number display constructor. So here we go into the number display constructor and the parameter of 60 now gets created as the rollover limit. So rollover limit at this point is worth 60, uh, which we've got as a local variable here. Um, rollover the uh, as we progress through the code, this goes into um, the the rollover limit local variable is then given to the limit instance variable. So as we go now, we can see that the instance variable or field is being created to 60. As we finish the constructor in the number display, we then go into um, the next line of code, which is then the update display. As we step into this, then we actually will follow this code and go into the update display method. As we click step into, let's just scroll that down. As we're still in the uh, clock display um, class, um, then it still says clock display in, in blue here. Um, we've still got the instance variables which, which we just created. Um, let's step into that then. As we've stepped into that, we've gone into hours.get display. Uh, we've gone into the number display.get display value here because we've stepped into that there. As we continue to step through that, we'll then go through the get display. Um, we went straight back then into the to the next method call, which is here, and so on and so forth. And so you can track what exactly and where the code goes through. Um, uh, until the end of resolution. So uh, that's a bit of an overview into the uh, debugger. Um, we've got the step, the step into. What I'll do, um, uh, the, the continue button just um, makes it continue so that you don't have to keep clicking step. Um, and at the moment the program and the, uh, the code is still live. So if we look back into here um, and then click um, a method here, then it will just go through and just do the method as per usual. 
Um, if we want to add more breakpoints into the code, then we can and simply reset the virtual machine, go into the code here, and then add in breakpoints where you want to. Tools. Uh, add a breakpoint. You can add breakpoints in wherever you like, and wherever those breaks are, that's when the program will stop. Uh, this debugger uh, window will appear, and then you'll be able to get access to it and get access to the local variables, field variables, method calls, and what exactly goes on in the background. Any questions on this? Uh, we'll discuss them in class. Otherwise, it's a very useful tool to understand what, exactly what's going on in your code. See you next time.